Yo guys, what's good? It's myself, the Diet John Peel. So with the emboldened rise of the far right, we're seeing more of our favourite rappers endorsing and even becoming advocates of right-wing views and just general dodgy views in general. Let's just be honest and have that conversation. I I see I I see good things about Hitler also. Today we are talking about something a lot more sinister. The name's Bond. James Bond. Nah, nah, hold up, not that Bond. Known simply as Philip H, or the pseudonym Mr. Bond, is a far-right rapper from Austria. Mostly rapping in English, but with free songs in German. With charming bodies of work, such as the Mein Kampf Volume 1 and Nazi Goes to Africa mixtape, inspired by the German Africa Corps in World War II, Probably the most shocking and frightening of these album covers, I have to admit, has a memorable name of The Woke Alone. A cover problematic for so many reasons, with horrible racist and anti-Semitic caricatures of Jewish people and black people and Arab people on the front cover. A wholesome confederate flag just in there to add some more evil to this. And even more evil and just plain just pure evil was the fact that the Mr. Bond put the mass murderer and white supremacist Dylan Roof, who was responsible for the vile Charleston church shooting, where tragically nine black people lost their lives. This album is distastefully covered in guns and ammunition as well. Worryingly, at one stage, all of his music was actually available on streaming services, so like Spotify, Apple Music, etc. I managed to find his music. Yes, I found his music. I just want to stress this point really clearly that I only listened for like research purposes just to get a general idea. And some of these tracks include con names like Concentration Camp, which uses the beat from Wu Tang's Clan's Gravel Pit. Uh, there was another track called Dear Donald, so it was like a sort of... It was a spin on Eminem, basically. Surprisingly a tribute to the former president, Donald Trump. He used the, basically the theme from Dido and made that into Dear Donald. It was like really weird. I'm not reciting any of the lyric because I'll get demonetized. All you need to know is that it's absolutely vile. Basically, his music wants to incite a race war, and it's the most hateful music I've ever heard. Filled with calls for hate crimes, murder of minorities, and promotes white supremacy and Nazi ideology. Even one track disses Eminem, trying to like emulate his voice and his candence. Personally, my biggest issue, my biggest, and the biggest crime of all of this is how weak his bars are and the production. It's just whack, man. Whack. So the argument is the main premise of his music that it's parody and people have even strangely compared him to Weird Al. Firstly, Weird Al is actually leagues higher than this guy and he's actually funny. I'm all for people expressing themselves on hip hop tracks. But this is just pure hate speech. Before I get some loser in the comments saying, Freedom of speech. If you didn't know already, there's limits to free speech. Some things are just aren't up for debate. If you actually do some critical thinking and a little bit of Google research, you'll find that there's limitations to it. So basically, to sum that up, it, it basically means if you say something that's going to cause a direct harm to someone else. In Mr. Bond's music, there's direct action for violence and calls for violence. After evading the Austrian authorities for a long period of time, he was tracked down and hunted by the Austrian authorities. This commenced after a heavily armed neo-Nazi gunman targeted a synagogue in the eastern city of Halle in Germany in 2019. As Mr. Bond's music was a key to the neo-Nazi scene, the gunman, filmed through his camera helmet, was blasting Mr. Bond's music. Stephen B was sentenced for a lifetime for murdering two people. He avoided the police for years. This is Mr. Bond who avoided the police. He had even been alleged to have translated and published the racist manifesto of the Christchurch gunman in New Zealand, where 51 people were killed. After a lengthy and massive investigation, in early 2021, police arrested Mr. Bond in the southern part of Austria. No surprise finding old-style Nazi-era flags, objects, 
and a stockpile of weapons. Kind of ironic when he's called Mr. Bond, but he's clearly the villain. <laughs> Concealing his identity during the trial, evidence of CD covers of Adolf Hitler on the front cover, drawings in which Jewish people are vilified, texts that approve of mass murder. Apparently Mr. Bond was acting meekly in the courtroom and how sorry he was and all that kind of BS, trying to counter with his weak ass defense. His brother ran the website Judas Watch and distributed songs and lyrics of Mr. Bond and kind of confessed to his crime. Mr. Bond was facing 20 years in prison. Later the verdict fell and this turned into 10 years for violations of Austria's Nazi Prohibition Act. The judge at the Vienna Regional Court based his sentence on Thursday on the dangerousness of the 37 year old's defendant pointing out his songs had already been downloaded hundreds if not thousands of times. According to the indictment, the rapper glorified Nazism, Adolf Hitler and the mass extermination of Jewish people in his music and videos. With the ever dooming rise of the far right, I do have some hope that good people outnumber these evil people. To a small degree, I'm just some guy on the internet. Some would call me a parlor socialist. You can sit here and say, how do people get to the place of being like Mr. Bond? Especially with social media, it's so easy for people to fall down, to fall down the rabbit hole of misinformation and hatred. I've seen this happen to loads of people that I thought were good people that have gone kind of down this weird path. And this can be through TikTok, it can be through shorts, it can be through loads of different avenues of them watching clips and almost getting like radicalized. Well, in simple terms, think of it like this. Something can start off as a joke and then can literally lead to violence. With transphobia, many studies showing that transphobia is sort of a gateway towards hatred. Anyway, Noah Sampson did an amazing video explaining the radicalization pipeline of the alt-right online. He intelligently breaks it down better than I ever could. On the subject, there's also braver anti-fascists and anarchists I want to commend who are, aren't afraid to punch a Nazi in the face. As fellow democratic socialist Dr. King once said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. I honestly believe teaching young people to love from a very young age is vital as the first few years to a child's life is absolutely vital. No one is born to hate, it's taught. I don't have all the answers here, but what I will close with, why be racist, sexist, homophobic, or transphobic when you could just be. Shh.